The 2020 Democratic primaries have been a fascinating case study on various public speaking techniques and strategies. Today, we are going to break down presidential candidate Andrew Yang's unique public speaking style and show you three techniques that he uses that you too can use in your public speaking career. For those of you who are unaware of who Andrew Yang is, Andrew Yang is a 2020 presidential candidate whose background has been a successful entrepreneur in the nonprofit space. Andrew Yang's main policy is called the Freedom Dividend, where every U.S. citizen would be giving $1,000 a month. Andrew Yang is considered a futurist, as he is one of the few candidates looking at the long-term ramifications of ever-increasing presence of artificial intelligence, automation, and technology on the working individual. About the seriousness of the fourth industrial revolution and automation, now we're here in Ohio, and Ohio has lost over 300,000 manufacturing jobs. Because if you go to a factory here in Ohio, you'll find wall-to-wall -wall robots and machines. With that said, Andrew Yang implements three key strategies in delivering his message. As an entrepreneur and self-proclaimed math nerd, Andrew Yang understands the power of data, stats, and facts. But this leaves an inherent challenge. If you start spitting stats out to most people very quickly, you will lose the attention of your audience and will be unable to make your point. This leads me to the first key technique, turn your data and stats into compelling stories. Here's an example of how Andrew Yang turns data into a compelling narrative. We're standing in the great state of Ohio, the ultimate purple state, the ultimate bellwether state. Why did Donald Trump win your state by eight points? Because we got rid of 300,000 manufacturing jobs in your towns, and we're not stopping there. How many of you have noticed stores closing where you work and live here in Ohio? Raise your hands. In this clip, we also see Andrew Yang's second technique. He engages the audience into his speeches, asking for consistent feedback. If you turn on cable news and tried to figure out why Donald Trump is our president today, what would the answers be? Go ahead, shout it out. Electoral college, Russia, racism, emails all mixed together in some kind of strange stew. This is a great technique that you can also implement. Andrew asks the audience to shout out the answers to the questions he asks or to raise their hand if they've seen automation take away jobs from their own cities. The last technique is one that I see in Andrew Yang that I don't really see in other candidates. That is Andrew Yang's unwillingness to attack his opponents personally. Now don't get me wrong, Andrew Yang will fiercely go after an opponent's policies. Senator Warren is 100% right that we're in the midst of the most extreme winner-take-all economy. As usual, Senator Warren is 100% right in diagnosing the problem. There are absolutely excesses in technology. It's not like any of us wants to use the fourth best navigation app. There's a reason why no one is using Bing today. Sorry, Microsoft, it's true. In the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, Dale states don't criticize, condemn, or complain. Human nature does not like to admit fault. When people are criticized or humiliated, they rarely respond well and will often become defensive and resent their critics. To handle people well, we must never criticize, condemn, or complain because it will never result in the behavior we desire. Andrew Yang understands that if he attacks his opponents personally, he loses allies in the long term. Andrew wants people to listen to his message because as Andrew has stated, well, that would be a version of victory, Seth. I've said for a while that I'm either going to win or the other candidates are going to sound a lot like me. This technique seems to be working as other candidates are in agreement or copying Andrew Yang's policies. I'm even willing to pilot something like UBI and to see how that would work. I agree with my friend Andrew Yang. I think universal basic income is a good idea. This technique has allowed Andrew Yang to continually amass support from both the right and the left. His community known as the Yang Gang, which predominantly resides on Reddit, has a community of people who will speak about policy over attacking each other. Why does this matter in your public speaking? As a public speaker, your job is to amass support for your ideas. While it might seem easier to attack a person or an idea and make it a scapegoat, long term, this is not a viable strategy. You want to build support around an idea and build bridges with those who may not support your ideas. As a quick recap, the three public speaking techniques I see translate data into compelling stories, engage the audience in a back and forth, don't criticize or attack a opponents. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button and turn the bell on for notifications. My name's Austin Juliano and I thank you for watching the video.